Sri Lanka have finally created history folks when they won the fourth ODI at Colombo. The four run margin ensured that Sri Lanka have a 3-1 lead in the five match series. History indeed has been created because as we all know that Sri Lanka is undergoing a severe economic turmoil. Yes, all the long petrol queues, all the protests and every other thing Indeed, it is still there. That has not gone away. But this series win for Sri Lanka is a good, it's like an oasis in the middle of a storm. In the middle of the desert, there is an oasis in which Sri Lanka are happy. Why? When was the last time Sri Lanka won a bilateral ODI series at home against Australia? 1992. Imagine in Kumar Sangakara's entire playing period and Mahela Jayavarne's entire playing period, Sri Lanka never managed to win a bilateral series at home against Australia. So the magnitude of this is huge considering the fact that Sri Lanka may have won an ODI series in Australia in 2010, but at home with Sangakara, Mahela Jayavarne, Jayasurya, Dilshan at their peak, they never won. 2004, they lost 2-3. In 2011, they lost 2-3. In 2017, 16-17, they lost 1-4. Now, they have won 3-1. So, this is a magnificent feat in Sri Lankan cricket history. But, looking at the gap of 30 years, this is actually not the first time a nation has broken a decades-long jinx. There are multiple instances and I'm going to guide you through what are the longest, longest durations in which a bilateral series has been won, either in ODIs or, T or tests. So after the Sri Lanka series, I'm sticking with Australia for the time being because Australia's test series win in Pakistan. You have to understand one thing. When Richie Beno toured Australia in 1959-60, they had won that series 2-0. But for 38 long years, they just could not win in Pakistan. Australia had a very torrid time in the subcontinent. It reflected in the performances against India, but Pakistan was the starting point of their jinx. From 1960, when they last won that series, 1959 to 60, they struggled to win every single time in Pakistan. The 80s were a period of absolute turmoil. They were whitewashed 3-0. In 1994, they lost by one wicket to Pakistan at the Gaddafi Stadium. No, sorry, sorry at the National Stadium in Karachi. Finally, that jinx ended in 1998, thanks to Mark Taylor's triple century, Steve Waugh's brilliant century. And that is why Australia managed to win a series in Pakistan after 38 years in the test match. Recently, Pakistan created history when they won the ODI series against Australia. Why? Because after 20 years, they had managed to win a bilateral ODI series against Australia, be it away or in Pakistan or in the UAE. After they had won in 2002, when they won that series 2-1, Pakistan had always struggled to win against Australia, be it tests, ODIs. Especially in ODIs, they were whitewashed final both in Australia and in the UAE. They struggled to win series even in the UAE. But finally, they won a bilateral series against Australia in Pakistan. And that was in 2022. Shockingly enough, prior to that, the last time they had won a three-match bilateral ODI series was 40 years ago in 1982. That is how Pakistan have been in ODI against Australia, perennial underachievers and always struggling. Who can forget England's test series win against Pakistan? They had last won in 1962, but in the dark. Nasir Hussain and Graham Thorpe staged the epic recovery. They needed to chase down 176 in the final two sessions of the third and final test. The first two tests were drawn. Absolute darkness had descended in Karachi. The Azan was been blad out. Another couple of overs and there have been total darkness. In that, Nasir Hussain and Graham Thorpe ensured England had also ended 38 years of pain in Pakistan. The 80s were a tumultuous period for a Pakistan and England relations, marred by controversy, fighting, even in the 90s, ball tampering allegations often meant that Pakistan had the upper edge. But England finally ended that in 2000. 
okay when you have when you play at home you definitely have an advantage right this was not the case for south africa when they played home tests against australia can you believe it from 1970 till 2018 it took south africa 48 years to break that jinx against australia 1970 to 1992 you all know that south africa was banned because of its apartheid policies but when they returned back to the fold the first series was drawn 1-1 After that Australia held a total dominance against Australia winning two against South Africa winning 2-1 in 1997 2-1 in 2002 3-0 in 2006 this uh, 2011 series was a two test series was drawn 1-1 and in 2013 it was 2-1 but after winning in Durban this series in 2018 was marred by the sandpaper gate allegations which totally changed Australian cricket culture so a deflated demoralized australia squandered the initiative they had already been beaten in port elizabeth they lost in newlands and in johannesburg when they lost by 492 runs south africa had ended nearly five decades of pain against australia 1970 to 2018 that was the time when they had not won a single test series at home at home against australia If you thought South Africa had pain against Australia well even Australia had pain in South Africa too when they won in 1958 South Africa then regained the initiative by winning it in 1960 by drawing in 1963 and winning two series in 65 and 67 and then the 04 whitewash that 1970 tour proved to be the end for South Africa's golden generation as 22 years of apartheid as i mentioned After they came back to the fold in 1993-94 Australia drew 1-1 but in 1997 when Ian Healy whacked a six to end Australia Spain and South Africa it took them 39 years The West Indies was one of the ultimate battlegrounds when it came to world cricket in the 70s and the 80s no nation came close to beating them Pakistan tried in the 80s they drew three series against them Australia last won in 1973 in the West Indies they followed it up with a 5-1 thrashing of the Windies in Australia but Clive Lloyd and his fearsome quartet of bowlers and brilliant batters ensured that Australia would not win in the Caribbean for the next 22 years that ended in 1995 when Steve War and Mark War that epic partnership in Jamaica ensured that the frank worrell trophy remained in australia and since then it's been with australia sri lanka has often been a very confounding country when it came to touring west indies remember have never won a test in sri lanka south africa won the first uh, series in 1993 but after that they were held to a stalemate Now in 2014 a dale stain masterclass in gaul gave south africa a big win and in 2014 when the final test was drawn with even dilruan perera taking five wickets south africa had ended 21 years of pain in sri lanka they finally won a series there after 1993 england yes england may be the white ball powerhouses right now but even in that era they were just about starting 1994 they had won on comeback against south africa but since then they the proteus held a brilliant edge over them winning series 6-1 4-1 5-1 but in 2008 a south african led england to a victory over his former country kevin peterson's captaincy got off to a great start in odis they hammered them 4-0 but sadly that was to be the peak of kp's captaincy and after that we all know what happened with the kp and peter moos saga india if you look at the head to head record against england have always been dominant but did you even know that in 2014 when india beat england 3-1 in that series you all know that tour was horrible because virat kohli managed just 134 runs in 10 innings when they won the odi series 3 1 india had actually won an odi bilateral series in england after a gap of 24 years in 1990 they had won the texaco trophy in 96 they had lost 2 0 the 2002 yes it was a triangular series remember this focuses only on bilateral series in 2007 they had lost 3 4 in 2011 they had lost 0 3 
But in 2014, they finally got their revenge and they managed to win 3-1 in a series that was kind of a rebooting for the Indian team after the disastrous showing in the test matches. Sticking to India, if there is one country in the Sena where they have struggled apart from South Africa, it has been New Zealand. 1968, they had won 3-1, but then for four decades, they had never won a series in New Zealand. 1976, they had won a test, but that series was drawn. In the 80s, thanks to Richard Hadley's brilliance, they never could win in New Zealand. 90s was held to a stalemate even in the early part of the 21st century. Well, New Zealand had the brilliance of Shane Bond, Stephen Fleming, Mark Richardson was solid. But finally, under the captaincy of MS Dhoni, when India won in Hamilton in 2009, that was enough for them to hold on to a 1-0 lead in the series. And Gautam Gambhir's resilience in Napier and reign in Wellington ensured that India finally broke the New Zealand jinx after 41 years. Consider the magnitude of this win. Apart from 2009, that one win is sandwiched between no series wins. Even now, look at 2014, you look at even 2020, India have not won a test in New Zealand. England, they have perennially struggled in the West Indies. They in fact bore the brunt of West Indies dominance in the 70s and the 80s. Tony Gregg, the late great Tony Gregg's grovel comment did not go down well and West Indies ensured that they gave England a lesson in cricket every single time. In the 80s, they were part of two consecutive black washes, final. Never before has that been achieved in the history of cricket. But Steve Harmison, when he took 7 for 12 in Jamaica, that was the start of England's dominance in the Caribbean. Matthew Hoggart took a hat-trick and all the batsmen chipped in. A 4-0 whitewash was averted in the Windies thanks to Brian Lara's 400. But England won that series 3-0 and consider this, that remains their only series win till now in the last 54 years. Subsequent series have arrived, but England have always failed in the West Indies. India, when, we talk, when I talk about the West Indies, every opponent fell by the wayside. Even India was no exception. They had chased down a record 400 in 1976 in Port of Spain. They had won in 1971. But after that, it was a tale of pain. India could have broken the jinx in 1997 by chasing 120 in Barbados, but they collapsed to 81 all out. Finally, under the captaincy of Raul Dravid and Anil Kumble's brilliant bowling, India won the Jamaica test in 2006. The first three tests were drawn and after 35 years, India, under the captaincy of Rahul Dravid, managed to end the Windies dominance. From 2006 till now, India have not lost a single series against the West Indies. As I had mentioned, home, home matches sometimes do not give out dominance. Consider this unique thing. When India had beaten Australia in 1986-87, 87 in particular, we all thought that India would hold the edge against Australia. But no, from 87 to 2009, Australia held the edge over bilateral contests in India. They beat them 3-2 in 2001, that epic series, then 4-2 in subsequent seven-match series in 2007 and 9. But in 2010, Virat Kohli and a certain Suresh Raina ensured that India won the Vizag ODI in between the other two ODIs were abandoned due to rain and in a weird but odd twist of fate, India had registered their first bilateral home ODI series win against Australia after 23 years. Why is India touted as the final frontier for most of the countries apart outside of Asia? Because they have to win in India. In 1969, when Australia won that series 3-1, it was marred by violence in Kolkata, in Mumbai. And also the Australians, there was also stone pelting in various occasions in Bengaluru. But after that, Australia never had the dominant edge against India. They lost 2-0 in India in 1979. They came back in 1986, the tight test in Chennai, who could forget. 96, they lost the Border Gavaska Trophy in Delhi. 2001, that epic series. But in 2004, Jason Gillespie, Damian Martin, that elite band of Australians under the captaincy of Adam Gilchrist ensured that Australia had finally conquered the final frontier. 35 years it took from 1969 to 2004. 
England, the spin twins of Monty Panesar and Graham Swan, who can forget how they bowled England to a comprehensive series win. After they had lost in Ahmedabad, they bounced back by winning in Mumbai and Kolkata, a KP masterclass to boot as well. 1984, when all the millennials were just about coming to this world, that was the last time England had won. And 2012, 28 years later, they finally achieved their dream. South Africa, well, as I had mentioned, 22 years of that golden generation were lost because of apartheid. But actually in England, they too had struggled. 1965 was the last time they had won. But subsequent series after that, in 1994, 1-1 draw. Even when they had come to 1998, they had won the first test, but it ended out to be a 2-1 series win for England. 2003, Graham Smith's twin double hundreds could not even give them a series win. It was tied 2-2. But finally, it was Graham Smith who ensured that England would suffer defeat at the hands of South Africa. 43 years of waiting ended when Smith's 154, the best fourth innings finish of all time, ensured that at Edgbaston, where the venue is for the India vs England test in 2022, South Africa would break their stranglehold against England. Well, in England, India too have often struggled. In, 80, in the 80s, as well as in the 70s, India had achieved some memorable moments. 1971, Chandrasekhar and his brilliance gave us a 1-0 win at the Oval. Same in 1986, we had dominated the 1986 series in both ODIs and in tests. But after that, we just did not win in England. 1990, lost 1-0. 1996, lost 1-0. 2002, drawn 1-1. But finally, in 2007, again under the brilliance of Dravid, India won the series 1-0. We were saved by MS Dhoni and some umpiring and the rain in the Lord's test. But we won in Trent Bridge. At the Oval, we held firm and India finally had won the trophy in England after 21 years. That was a big gap. Imagine the likes of Tendulkar, Ganguly and all were in danger of not winning a test series in England. But luckily, Dravid fulfilled that wish for them. England, if South Africa had struggled in England, so did England struggle in South Africa. 1965 was the last time England had tasted success against South Africa. But Apartheid and the subsequent series in South Africa meant that England had a torrid time. 95, they lost. 98-19, you will remember that infamous Centurion test, double declaration and the first instance of a fixed test. Saw England lose, win that match in Centurion, but they lost the series 2-1. But in 2004, Matthew Hoggard, a brilliant sensational spell from him in Johannesburg, combined with Andrew Strauss and Marcus Trescothic's knocks, ensured England had won a series in South Africa after a very long time, close to four decades. And finally, when we look at it, India in Sri Lanka. Yes, now we may be having the edge over Sri Lanka in all formats. But during the Jaya Surya, Dilshan, Sangakara, Jayavardhane, Muralidharan, Mendis era, India had struggled to win there. 1993, we had won 1-0. But then when we toured Sri Lanka in 1997, a nil-nil draw on flat decks. Who can forget the 952 test? 2001, although Dravid and Ganguly's brilliance in Kandi gave us a win, we lost that series 2-1. 2008 also, we lost 2-1 thanks to the brilliance of Mendes and Murli. 2010, Murli Dharan's farewell series, it ended 1-1. But in 2015, Finally, we managed to break. It was Kohli's first full-time series as captain. And he gave us, after losing the test match in Gaul, we finally won 2-1. And since then, we have never lost a series in Sri Lanka. So, 22 years of pain was eliminated in 2015. So, Sri Lanka have ended three decades of pain. As you have seen through this explainer, it is not the first time that nations have had to wait for a very long time for a series either at home or away to end. It takes time, but when it comes, it is really sweet. Thank you so much, folks, for joining us for this live. Press the like, comment, share, subscribe button. We are there on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram as well. Thank you.